Some people love this tree, some dislike it. And me? I'm among those who appreciate the impressive eastern cottonwood for all it has to offer. This deciduous native tree is majestic. It can reach heights of 60 to 90 feet and is a member of the willow family. It often grows near water but it's also comfortable on drier land. The large glossy triangular shaped leaves have toothed edges and don't grow directly across from each other. They have flat stems, so even a slight breeze causes them to sway in the wind with a unique rustling sound. Mature trees have a deeply grooved grayish brown bark, which may protect them from drought or fire. Both male and female flowers are sometimes called catkins and are born on separate trees as shown here. Most likely this tree is called cottonwood because of how the female's fluffy seed coverings resemble those of the cotton plant. In late March, look for the resinous male buds which appear before those of the females. This tree is sometimes called balm of Gilead but it's not the one that grows in the Middle East. Probably why some refer to it by this name is because the buds have a heavenly scent and perhaps curative powers. Whatever the reason, searching for and collecting these pointed buds gets me outside after a long winter. Usually the fattest ones are found on the highest branches and thus unobtainable. Because twigs of this tree are weak and pliable, the wind often scatters branches onto the ground, which makes it easy for me to get some buds. Pry one open to reveal the resin inside. It's sticky. There should be an orangey goo which smells sweet and musky. Its perfume reminds me of exotic oils like frankincense and myrrh. To make a fragrant oil, Put the bud bits in a small jar and cover them with olive oil. You can either remove the small developing male catkin from inside the bud or leave it there. Let this sit for several weeks or even months to allow their scent to permeate the oil. When buds are filtered out, I'm left with a fragrant oil. I wish you could smell this blend. I don't consume this mixture. Instead, I put a few drops in pre-made lotions or in massage oil. I collect pollen from various trees, and the male catkins of cottonwood are usually the first to produce it in early April. These release large amounts of pollen that's carried by the wind, so this may be a reason why those with allergies consider the tree to be problematic. Fortunately, I'm not allergic to pollen. If you are, be cautious about using it. These large maroon catkins stand out in the spring landscape and appear before the leaves emerge. If you look up and it seems there's thousands of two-inch caterpillars hanging from the branches, you've found them. Catkins are distinctive and plentiful. Many are located high off the ground, so I can't reach them. But because it's usually windy at this time, I'm able to pick up many fallen ones from the ground. Since all catkins don't shed their pollen at the same time, they can be gathered over several weeks. These have gone by and are no longer worth collecting. I bring these drops home and pick out the supplies I'll need to process them. Arrange the catkins on parchment paper and leave space around each one. The warmth of my kitchen encourages them to release their delicate yellow pollen. Gently press down on the catkins to get even more powder. Be warned, if you leave them sitting for too long, 
these little wormy guys appear. Use a fine sifter to remove stray bits. Transfer the pollen to a jar, label, and put in the freezer so it won't become rancid. Why do I do this? Maybe pollen has nutritional value, since the bark of trees in the willow family contains the compound salicin, which can be made into aspirin. Perhaps there's some of this in the pollen as well? That's my guess, as I'm not an herbalist. I don't use it medicinally, though I do consume it. Hopefully, I'll get some benefits. I put this fine powder in smoothies, pancakes, or baked goods. It takes a lot of catkins to get a good amount. Later in the season, I usually combine it with the pollens I collect from fir, spruce, and pine trees. A word about female cottonwoods. These produce hanging yellowish-green flowers, which are less colorful than those of the males. Female flowers swell up in early May. They release their fuzzy-covered seeds in June, which are carried by the wind for long distances. The ground often becomes covered with this downy, so-called, snow. Another reason why folks might not like this tree. Oh my gosh, this is so soft. Ah, I wish I could figure a way to get rid of the little seeds. This cottony fluff appears at the same time as the edible flowers of the black locust tree, a signal to look for those fragrant blooms. To remember this connection, I say, when cottonwood snow, black locust flowers show. Once leaves appear in early May, it's too late to collect either buds or catkins. If you find a tree or trees, remember their location and return next year. Perhaps you too will make use of their gifts. The cottonwoods are all in bloom and when the wind picks up It's snowing in June